Hi, my name is Bob Batson. I'm part of the management team here at Advanced Adhesive Systems. This is a family business that started in 1994 and the garage of my house. And today we occupy 42,000 square feet in Newington in the old Loctite plant. As you can see, we've progressed to a lot more equipment. And now instead of making pail by pail, we're making drum by drum and skid loads of drums every day for many manufacturing companies. We'd like to take you on a tour of the plant and show you what we do and the capacity and the skills that we have in making specially custom formulated adhesives. Here we're unloading the 300 gallon tanks of a methyl methacrylate adhesive for a specific customer. These are vacuum tanks with water jackets on them so that we can control the temperature. Also pull the vacuum to release air in the product and makes a very nice finished product uh, ready to go to the customer. This is for a private brander who puts his own labels on the product, which is the primary part of our business, is making products for other companies who actually market it. We focus on custom formulating and manufacturing and try not to get involved in the marketing side of the business or competing with our customers. Because this product is so viscous, so heavy in viscosity, that we have to use a press to force it out of the tanks and into the drums. All of our equipment is stainless steel. This had been a food quality stainless steel so that we do not have any problems with contamination of the, the products on it. They're all maintained by our own maintenance department. Uh, and they actually are able to make 300 gallons at a time of product. Our crew of operators have been with us most of them for at least 12 to 15 years. They're very skilled, efficient in what they do. They work together as a team to make sure that the product is out the door on time and of the right quality. This is the resin bay. We try to keep activators and uh, the uh, catalytic materials on one side and the resins on the other so we don't have any cross-contamination. So this side here primarily makes anaerobics UV resins, and the resins for our methyl methacrylates and epoxies. This is a custom formulated resin that's going into the RV market uh, to bond fiberglass and to uh, also for aluminum trim to fiberglass. They're a very specialized product. Uh, we sell quite a bit of this during the season when they're building RVs. The time when we started in 94 with a drill press in my garage, we've come up to this type of equipment where we can make a variety of products for a variety of customers in different colors and in different cure speeds. Everything is custom formulated. We don't have a catalog. We go by what the customer needs, not what we have to sell. This is the activator bay where we make most of the catalysts and hardeners and different products which do have contain the uh, copper and catalytic uh, formulations here. As you can see, we have a variety of equipment in sizes so that we can make small batches as well as large batches up to the largest tanks in the other room there. So that we're not hampered by saying any customer has to have a special batch size. We can make all batch sizes and we can make them effectively. When we got into water-based emulsions for the flooring industry, this makes a carpet adhesive. We went to plastic tanks, which hold, this is a 300 gallon. And that we're able to make emulsions very quickly and easily. They have a large turn, a quick turnover time where we can get three and four batches done a day in a tank like this. We have four or five tanks of the plastic variety that are ready to be used at any time. This is the reactor room, which we have four main reactors here, a prototype reactor, 50 gallons, 
150, 150, and then in the corner, we have our 250 gallon reactor. This is for making our own oligomer resins. We need to be independent of outside supply of a lot of different raw materials so that we can make our own and uh, have our own supply and the quality we want. So that these reactors are working all the time producing our own line of oligomers which we use in our products. Okay, this is our shipping receiving where we're in our main warehouse. As you can see, being in the chemical business means having a lot of different raw materials and having a lot of different package sizes that we can accommodate our customers here. All these pail kits are going out to one customer for a synthetic trim board that's used by most housing uh, construction today to put up they, the trim around windows, around the, the uh, roofing, roofs on it. So uh, this is also a very big part of our business. And these are all colored a nice shade of white that matches the exact trim board. And it was custom formulated and color matched for a specific product. This is a sidewalk cork, the rough text we call it, for uh, Times Square. This is color match called Dusty Gray. Uh, John Squatiri, our contractor down in the city, uh, has a contract with them to apply this to solidify a lot of the loose pavers that they have, which is a problem down there. This is a very elastic material. We can show you this when we go up to the quality assurance lab and do some testing with this material to show how flexible and how compressible it is here. But we make this for John. Uh, he's our exclusive contractor for this. And uh, it works very, very, very well. This is one of our cartridge fillers that can do both sides of the cartridge at the same time. It, it's called airless fill because you press it down from the bottom and it fills up to the top here without any air being incorporated into the product. It's all air operated. There's no chance of uh, electricity or flammability or anything else like this here. And it's really a great machine. We have several of these machines that we're able to operate simultaneously in order to complete all the filling jobs that we have. These are cartridges for Cheesecake Factory. We snap them together with the activator side. This is a two to one epoxy rather than being an MMA one-to-one -one here. So we snap it together with the other side of the cartridge here. And this is shipped out to Cheesecake Factories for all of their renovations and new construction. This is where we're working with epoxy for inside uh, grouting applications. We use methyl methacrylate for outside grouts and corks, and we use epoxy for inside. Uh, this is color matched as you can see to a very, very nice uh, looking color here. We make these in both the disc to show customers and you can see how pliable it is here. I can bend it easily with my hands. So this is not a rigid type of material here which is going to cause problems. Uh, we've been in some locations and kitchens on the main line of a kitchen, the hot line of the kitchen here, for over 15 years without failure of the grout. The, the tiles may crack, the stainless steel trim around the uh, grease pit, and that may, you know, fail, but our epoxy has held up over all conditions with all cleaning on it. And as you can see, we have different colors that we make for different customers. This is our light box. One of the issues that we have with customers is that colors look different in different types of light. So that if I turn off, I put on incandescent and you look at this color, it's one color. If I turn on the next light, which is fluorescent, which is very popular in most kitchens and bathrooms, or if I put on the new LED light, which is becoming very prevalent in most hotels and restaurants now, they all have a different appearance. What we do is we take our color matching sticks 
and the customer selects off of a chart like this here and tells us which one that he'd like to see. And we match it and then we test it out in the color box or the light box here to make sure that the lights that he's using will show up the color he needs. Okay. This is dusty gray. Who is this made for, Karen? It was made for a hotel. A hotel, okay, on it. It's quite a bit harder than you can see the MMA exterior here. Now, this is Lincoln Beige, which was made for Lincoln Center. Uh, it took about four or five different color trials for them to approve the color. But when they did, they say this is the best color that they would like to have for all of their work. They have three or four other colors for black, for charcoal, which they're going to use because of the fountain and of the different arrays of different pavers they have. So the outside, as instead of being rigid and hard, is quite flexible, the exterior type of material so that you can easily bend it. And this is what you need for exterior cork because of expansion and contraction, that you can actually pull this and it has 200% elongation. It's acrylic based also, which is great weathering. And it's got great weather resistance and solvent resistance. This doesn't have any problems with ice melt or cleaning. I mean, a lot of products we send to some of the cleaning companies like Echo Labs to see if it stands up to their most aggressive cleaning. Uh, one of the first tests that we had to pass was oleic acid, which is produced by food uh, as it actually decomposes or, or is being, uh, let's say, cooked or anything else like this here. And so that it's very aggressive and it kills regular cork. I mean, if you take a sanded mortar-based cork, Things like oleic acid actually cause it to crack and disintegrate. Our materials we can immerse in there, put in an oven, and have it sit there for weeks and have no effect whatsoever on the epoxy. Epoxies are well known for being solvent resistant. We also specially select um, the chemicals for each application. Um, as, long, as well as the pigments. The pigments are all weather fast to the highest degree that we can get. So there's no fading, even in the exterior applications and interior. Yeah, the two main problems with a lot of either epoxies or MMAs is, is either fading of the color or yellowing. So what we do is we put in uh, UV absorbers to prevent yellowing. And we also put in color fast uh, pigments so they do not fade. So that we, John gives warranties, our contractor John will give a warranty for five to 10 years against any change in the physical properties and or the color of the product. Here Karen's making slugs. Well, what we, these are replicas of a typical grout line. It's about three eighths wide by three eighths deep, which we would find for interior types of applications here. Well, this is for exterior. Then. And this is an exterior one here yep. and yeah, this you can see the one-to-one. -one. So as John does, he tapes it off to make sure that there's no residue on either of the paver sides. We do this exact same technique that John uses. Oops. And then you just remove the excess. There's no air. How much time will you have to work with that, Karen? In, in About the, an hour. An hour in an there? An hour at room temperature. Okay. Uh. We also do this outside in the sunlight to make sure that it's not going to be too fast if it's being used on direct sunlight and that so that they have time to work it. So once you remove your tape, you've got a beautiful clean edge. And John also tapes off like this. Yeah. So the material will, as it cures, it will depress a little bit, forming a concave surface in there. And uh, it gives it a very nice appearance. Like you can see here, I mean, uh, 
these are the epoxies, but if you have the MMAs, they are, let me just grab that. They have the texture of a sanded system so that they look like a normal grout. A lot of times on the interiors at Cheesecake Factories or that, they don't mind having a shiny surface like this here. It stands out against the rough quarry tiles and gives a nice contrast between the rough and the finished look. Okay, this is our quality assurance test lab. Today we're testing, these are our, our water uh, emulsion adhesive that's used for flooring where we try with PVC. We're trying it with different products, but basically carpet, vinyl tile, resilient tiles are also very big. And Todd here is operating the uh, MTS in, or tensile tester. And he puts the sample in the jaws and clamps it up. And then we're gonna pull it apart. And it's all recorded on the machine here. And the machine does all the math for us and gives us statistical deviation and everything else. As you can see, the product is being pulled. It's elastic in this area here. And it's just sliding on. So we'll do all the different substrates and determine what the strength is. This is also helping us in formulate when we need better properties, such as higher strength or less strength. In certain cases, the customer wants it to come away clean from the substrate, like the carpet tile, and stay on the floor. But the nice thing about it is if we take a sample like this, with this pressure sensitive adhesive, you can put it back together again and it forms a, a new bond called retac. So that if you took up a carpet tile and there's nothing on the back because the, the adhesive did not stick to the backing here but stuck to the flooring, you could put this back down without having to reapply the adhesive, which is a great cost savings in mess and time and effort by contractors out in the field. So whether we're doing resilient tile like this, or whether we're doing carpet tile, or carpeting itself, these are all issues that uh, they have the same thing. This is, when you look at this, you see legs. This is the, the, the rubbery, pressure-sensitive adhesive of here. And that almost 90% stays here onto this surface here. It's still tacky. Press it back down, and it has about 75% of its original strength. A nice thing about this material, too, is that a lot of water-based products have a tendency to re-emulsify if they see water. Our product will not re-emulsify. It maintains its strength even in the presence of water. Okay, with Karen's project, with the rough tracks, we make these dog bone samples. This is according to the American Society of Testing Materials. And so that we put them into the jaws and we measure how much stretch we can get with the product. It's one of our quality assurance tests to make sure that the product is going to do exactly what we say it will do here. The other test we do is a compression test. Gra exterior grout has to be able to compress and it has to be able to elongate. That's because the pavers and the concrete and the stone, whatever we're dealing with, whether it's marble, granite, concrete, uh, or some aggregate, is going to expand when it gets hot and it's going to contract when it gets cold. The grout has got to stay up with the material. It has to move with it and stay adhered to the surface. The purpose of the grout is to prevent water from getting down below and damaging the substrate, the bedding materials, or actually causing heaving up when it, if it did freeze 
and causing the pavers to actually expand and throw up. So that's why it's very important that you never break the bond between the grout and the paver or the concrete. So while we're testing this, we can compress this down to almost 50% of its size, take the compression load off and have it come back to where it was originally. It might take two to three days to come back completely, but it does come back. When we stretch them, we can do a, a show you an elongation test. When we've done this test before, it elongates almost twice its original length, 200%. So that means if something is contracting, it will actually come back to its normal and it will stay there if it expands and if it will push in to half of its size if it contracts. These are some of the colors that we've made recently for John. These are all natural looking types of materials that are going for exterior. We make our own concrete blocks in order to test things out, which we bond together, and that we do different testing with uh, ice melt and high pressure washing and everything else to make sure that there's no damage to the product when it's being used by the customer. There's a lot of testing that goes on in something as simple as a grout. All of the batches of materials we make we keep a retain, uh, in this case these are MMAs or epoxies and that, where we label the date and the uh, batch number, the product, whether it's activated or not, and we store them at room temperature for three years so that if anything goes wrong in the field, we're able to take our retain, be able to test it and see, A, could it be due to A, the product was wrong, the shipping, which the temperatures in shipping can cause a degradation of the product if it exceeds certain values. I mean, in a hot truck at 150 degrees may cause some products to have a problem. Or if they're a water-based, if it's frozen, can have. So we test these products every three months to make sure that the product is still in spec and is still warranted, warranted uh, to the customer on it. So in the course of a year, we'll have literally hundreds of different retains of materials here. What I'm doing is um, three-month testing. I take material out of the cartridge, put it in a container, a pickup. I do tensile testing, viscosity measurements, gel time, and exotherm. And then once that testing is complete, I return the sample to the cartridge and then return it to the shelves. Okay, this is one of the main development labs uh, that we have. We have six development labs, uh, each doing different things. On that side is where we do UV development. You can see the UV lamps that we're using. We've brought in a new UV lamp, which is called an LED broadcast lamp here. Kind of an interesting thing here, very low energy. But we can have different photo initiators now, which were not available years ago, but are today, which actually pick up this light, this very low light, and be able to cure and give a very, very good bond. This replaces, to a large extent, some of the older lamps, which were much more powerful. This is like 400 watt. This is 20 watt. You can see the difference, I mean, a factor of 20, and yet with the new chemistry, we're able to achieve the same cure. This here is a portable UV lamp that used by John, our contractor down in New York City, that actually he could do the side of a building with this thing here, of just opening up the shutters, or he could do vanities in hotels. We made it a UV curing material for doing different stone and marble and granite and that in hotel rooms uh, where he would put it on the vanity to prevent damage to the vanity, cure it in seconds with no odor in the room and be gone. I mean, and this was within seconds. The beauty about UV is that in 10 to 15 seconds, you're 100% cured with no odor. 
So the other thing is we're always bringing in new more raw materials. We're always testing different, uh, different things as they come on the market, making sure that we've got the most up-to-date adhesive formulations going. Todd is one of our new development technicians, and he's doing peel tests on fabric onto the water-based carpet adhesive and measuring how much. This is a retac type of test where we've had put it down and we've removed it several times, but it's still very, very tacky. And if you push it back down into position, it will have additional strength that you can't actually move that. But when it comes away, it comes away clean. And that's what the customer wants. He wants what's called low peel strength so that he can peel it up easily with no material on this side, all sticking to the floor. But when he puts down a new tile, it's going to hold that new tile in place just like the original tile was held in place here. So we do these tests, making sure that the adhesive works exactly like we say it's going to work. Every batch is tested with this type of test. Thanks for taking the tour. We're here to answer any questions you may have, and we look forward to working with you on your applications in the near future.